Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Devos and Dumbbells Podcast. My name is Jared, and I am so thrilled that you are joining us today, whether you're watching on Facebook, whether you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to listen to this. Hopefully, it'll be an encouragement. Hopefully, it'll be practical, some things that you can apply right now in your life to make it better physically and spiritually, emotionally. And I just want to thank you for tuning in today. Today, I want to read this scripture. It's found in Galatians chapter 6. But before we do, I always want to start off with the word of prayer. So if you'll allow me to do that for just a moment. God, I thank you so much for the thought, the scripture, God, that you've showed me. And I just pray that, Lord, as I share today, that you would impress in our hearts things that we can do, God. um, That we can apply this to make our lives better and uh, to fulfill the purpose that you've called us to. I just thank you that your spirit is with us in this moment. And we just love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the scripture that I want to talk about today is found in Galatians chapter 6, starting in verse 4. It's verse 4 and 5. And this is a scripture that I've never actually, not that I can remember anyway, came across, come across before. And uh, I really like it. It jumped out at me. It kind of grabbed my attention. And hopefully it can for you as well. But let's get into it. Chapter 6 of Galatians, verse 4 and 5. It says, Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Verse 5, For we are each responsible for our own conduct. I love this scripture. Um, I don't know what it is, if it's because I'm a guy, or if it's because of the the way I was raised, or, or whatever but this, it just kind of like punches and it feels really cool. Um, as I was reading this, I kind of thought back to those times as a kid and even now into adulthood when I would do a job well done. My dad would tell me, good job, son. Um, just, a, just a random instance, you know, I'd be mowing the yard and I would take pride in mowing the yard. The yard looked good. It was a fresh cut. And uh, so my dad would tell me, good job. And that made me feel really good. And uh, if you know anything about the Enneagram personality Types. I'm a type three, so that will explain a lot if you know what I'm talking about. Um, I love the praises of people. It sounds really vain to say, but I like being noticed. (laughs) Anyway, back to the verse. So it says, pay careful attention to your own work and you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. The the thing I want to talk about today is eliminating our excuses. Say that. Say no more excuses. I am a person who cannot stand an excuse maker um, because we all have excuses. You've heard the saying, I'm not going to repeat it. We all have excuses and basically they all stink. And so excuses, they look like a lot of things, but ultimately what it does is we talk ourselves out of something or come up with an explanation as to why we couldn't do something or why we didn't do what we were supposed to do. We come up with these excuses all the time. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have to tell you, we all know what these excuses are. And what I've learned is the only person that you really punish when you make an excuse is yourself. Like, you hurt yourself the most when you make excuses. And um, so I want to encourage you today to make decisions based on your commitments. Make decisions based on the type of person that you want to be. That's a good way to say it. Would the person that you want to be do the things that you're doing, make the decisions that you're making? So for instance, if I'm, if I, the the type of person I want to be is an extremely fit dude, right? That's just an example. I mean, it's real life too. I obviously want to be fit, but If I want to be that kind of person, if I want to be physically fit, of course I'm going to allow myself some cake every now and again. I love cake. But back to the point. The decisions I make, am I going to get up in the morning when I don't feel like getting up? Am I going to go work out when I don't feel like working out? Am I going to take some time to prepare my food so I know that I'm not eating junk food throughout the day? Am I going to maintain discipline in food choices? Am I going to do the things that I'm supposed to do in order to be a physically fit person? Now, we can apply this spiritually. 
Am I going to get up and read my Bible? Am I going to spend time in prayer and talking to God? Am I going to go to church? Am I going to serve in church, not just attend? Am I going to be a part of the church? These are some things we have to ask ourselves when uh, we're talking about reaching these goals or becoming the types of person, uh, the types of people that we want to be. Does the person I want to be, will they make these types of decisions? And and if it doesn't line up with your purpose, if it doesn't line up with the person that you're trying to be, then there's you're wasting your time if you if if you make decisions that aren't based on that. Um, as an example, just as an example, if I want to be someone who's um, closer to God and I want to spend time with Him, and I make the excuse, you know, I don't feel like getting up or I don't have time. We've all been there. Well, then that's obviously not the decision that the type of person that I want to be would make. And so that's how I kind of filter a lot of my decision making decision making is, is this the type of, is this decision going to lead me towards the type of person that I want to be? And so the second part of this verse, um, um, on verse four in particular, it says satisfaction of a job well done. And we won't need to compare ourselves to anyone else. Now just think about this for a second. How many times, A day, really, scrolling through our Instagram feed, looking at people's Facebook posts, they're traveling the world, doing whatever. Well, not right now, but you get it. Um, How many times do we fall into the pit of comparison? And we feel less than, we feel shameful, we feel like we don't measure up, we feel like we're missing out, whatever it is. But how many times do we play this comparison game? And I think it's, I mean, it's intentional that even a couple thousand years ago when Galatians was written, he's telling us, hey, don't compare yourself to one another. It's so, it's so relevant in our day and age because comparison is, is, is a virus. It's a disease that we all have to face. So it says, don't compare yourselves to one another. And then it says, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. I think it's good to have people that you look to, right? I think it's good to have mentors, absolutely. That's how we grow, that's how we develop. We have people in our lives that point out you know, the, um, the blind spots that maybe we don't see. But comparison is different. Comparison creates jealousy, it creates envy. And so it's, it, it very clearly tells us, don't compare yourself to one another. And then, um, for we are each responsible for our own Conduct, And so I want to sum this up by saying that thought again. The only person that you're going to punish by making your excuses is yourself. You were created for more. You were created for purpose. You have potential inside of you, God-given potential. And when you create excuses, when you make excuses as to why you can't do something, well, then you limit God's potential in your life. God is unlimited. Okay? Hear me. God is limitless. Right, Neither time nor space can contain him. He's outside of time and space. He has no limits. But we can limit his work in us by making these excuses. And I hope this doesn't sound condemning. I don't want it to sound condemning because if we're honest and I'm honest, I've made decisions before that, you know, don't line up with the person that I want to be. And I've made excuses for those decisions. And what I've learned, and hopefully this speaks to you, is that shame will never change anything. If I if I am ashamed because I didn't work out or if I am ashamed of a decision that I made or I'm ashamed that I didn't read my Bible today and I just feel bad about it, well then guys, it's 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 not going to make maybe temporarily it'll it'll, you know, make me want to be better or whatever, but that shame is not going to create a long-term lasting response, a result in my life that I want. It just makes me feel bad. I mean, think about how many times have you said, well, I'm never going to do that again. You feel really shamed, uh, ashamed about it. And then you make the decision a few days later and you do the same thing over and over again. It's an endless cycle. And so don't let shame be the reason you want to change. Don't let shame creep into your heart, creep into your life. Take care of that. But make decisions based on the person you want to become. And it will make everything better. It'll make your health better. It'll make your walk with God better. It'll make your family, your relationships better when we make those kind of decisions. And so 
kind of talking, you know, right now with, with everything going on and gyms are closed and there's not a lot that can be done um, outside of your house. Um, just a couple of things that I've kind of been incorporating in my life over the past um, couple of months, especially with everything. Because, I mean, <laughs> we're not moving, right? We're stuck at home. Um, a lot of us may not have access to equipment. Fortunately, I do. But there's also so many things that you can do without it. And one of those things, and this is real simple, but it has great benefits. It's just going for a walk. Um, a lot of times when we are you know, in normal life and we're going to work and whatever, we, we, for the most part, are active. Obviously, some of our jobs may be inactive and you're sitting at a computer, but we still get up, we're going places, we're walking, you know, we're doing this and that. But right now, a lot of us are just sitting at home on our couch or at a desk or whatever in our offices and just sitting and sitting. And so one thing that I've been doing, and, and it's, it's made me feel, for one, just a lot better about myself, but also I'm seeing benefits of it health-wise. It's just going for a walk. Um, Rael and I, my wife, we have a couple of parks around here that are open. Um, so we like to go for walks. I just walk my street um, every now and again. I'll just think to myself, let me get outside and go for a walk just because I get tired of being on the inside. And um, this is when something like a Fitbit, um, some sort of tracker, an Apple Watch or whatever, this is really good because it'll really open your eyes to um, how little you're actually moving during this time. And so the, the to sum it up, I'm just saying move, whatever that may be. Look up a YouTube video um, on home workouts. Go for a walk, go for a run, do some push-ups. Anything is better than nothing. And uh, that's one thing that that I think a lot of people get tripped up on um, is that anything is better than nothing. For example, Right, We can apply this in other areas of our life. If you're trying to save money and maybe you're not able to save as much as you would like to with each paycheck, but anything is better than nothing. I wouldn't tell someone, hey, because you can't save any money or because you can't save a certain amount of money, just don't save money at all, right? Like that's stupid. But I mean, if you look at it in health wise, like anything is better than nothing. If you can work out five times a week, awesome. If you can work out three times a week, great. That's kind of what I like people to shoot for. But if you can work out once or twice a week, you can get a good solid workout in. Anything is better than nothing. Start where you are and don't let anyone tell you that you're wasting your time because anything is better than nothing. All right. Well, I love you guys. I'm going to pray us out of here. Pray that you have a blessed week. God, I thank you so much for every person listening or watching. We thank you that you have created us for purpose. You have given us potential. Lord, we just thank you that we're going to eliminate the excuses out of our lips. Lord, we are no longer going to make excuses for the why uh, for why things are the way they are. We're going to take ownership of that. And we're going to move forward. And we're going to trust you. And we aren't going to let excuses stop us from becoming the people that you've called us to be. God, we love you. We thank you. We trust you. I pray health and healing over every single person listening. We, uh, we trust you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, follow me on Instagram at Jared Wayne Ayers. I'm on TikTok, Jared Ayers Fitness. You can look up Jared Ayers Fitness on Facebook. Go to jaredairsfitness.com. I have some free resources for home workouts there. But I love you. Make it a great week. I will see you next time on the Devos and Dumbbells podcast. Have a good one.